Hello friends and welcome to this week's Bible Moment. I have been hiking through the woods and um, my family has been watching. We are hooked on during this quarantine. We are hooked on the show Survivor. That's what we've been wearing our neck gaiters, but on Survivor you'll see them wear them like a headband. If you've watched that show You'll see the different teams have different colors. So that's what brought me to this week's Bible moment. So I hiked through the woods, I set up my tent, and I grabbed a few things. And what reminded me, because a bunch of you might have been missing summer camp. I know two of my kiddos were signed up to go to camp, and this COVID canceled their camp. And I thought, let's make camp outside. So we are out for a quick camp. I am a sweaty mess. You can also make, for Survivor, you can also get bandanas. That's always fun to put on your head and you can tie it back and then you can pick teams and form alliances and they do immunity challenges. Oh, and then someone actually gets voted off. Voted off the island. You want to stay on the island and that again brought me to my Bible moment. You want to stay with Jesus, right? I want you to stay with Jesus. So let's unpack and get into this week's Bible moment. Now remember last week, look, I brought my backpack Bible. Last week, my son Anthony read the um, Jesus is tempted in the wilderness. And that was Matthew chapter four. And we read that. So this is always great to take with you camping, a little small Bible or use your Bible app. Anthony introduced us to the Bible app last week. So, and speaking of camp, my shirt, it's an old shirt, I don't know if you can read it, it says Chaos Coordinator. But back to summer camp, like when you would go to camp, you would have to make a plan, I would think. Or if you were going on vacation, you would need to make a plan. Or maybe if you're headed out somewhere and you have an address, how do you find it? Well, nowadays you probably have a GPS or maybe an app on your phone to guide and direct you there. Back in the old days when I was little, which I should have grabbed, is an old paper map and we'd have to sit and read the paper map and read the roads and the routes that we were supposed to take. And then read the legends, right? There might be a, um, a street and a river or water or anything like that. So, but, um, so today we are um, Bible moment is going to be about the survivors in the Bible. So if you were going to summer camp, what would be on your plan? I know some of the things that I brought would be water. Water would be good to stay hydrated. Whew, it's really hot out here. Sleeping bag, a pillow. I brought a lantern so I could see. I have a flashlight hooked on my bag and when it gets dark. Um, I brought a thermos. You can have hot stuff here, cold stuff here. The lid pops off and you can have a bowl or scoop up your water. What else are some things? A first aid kit. Ugh, these are good to have. You don't never want to have boo-boos. Speaking of boo-boos, I packed my boo-boo stick. But um, band-aids, um, anything just in case you get mosquito bites, bug bites, hopefully not a snake bite. Ugh. Um, what are some other few little things? Bug spray, uh, hand sanitizer. I should spray some bug spray in the tent. We got all kinds of mosquitoes in my old tent here. All right, there we go. And then I've got extra bandanas and extra survivor. Look, we could be on an alliance. We could form a friendship, a team together. But these are real fun. Grab you a bandana and play the game Survivor or look for it online. Sunscreen, pack your sunscreen. All right, let's dive into this week's Bible moment. Um, and actually, I'm gonna read on my paper first. All right, so, uh, let's see. All right, this week, actually this series, because we're gonna be learning about the survivors of the Bible. So this will be a little series now is our memory verse throughout this series is Psalms 29, 11. And it says, um, oh, the, I didn't grab the paper verse. I'll have to read it out of my Bible real quick here. Um, but it's 29, 11. And then the today's uh, passage is gonna be in 1 Samuel 17, 20 through 50. 
So if you were given a choice, would you spend the night outside here in the tent under the stars or would you prefer to be in a nice air conditioning cushing hotel? Some people um, prefer the trips in the woods. Some people prefer trips in the hotel. Some people like fishing and hunting. Some people like their local restaurants and, and a burger instead of marshmallows over the fire. The great outdoors isn't for everyone, but that's the reason, but some people live for that. Those people, that's why there's the Cabela store, the Bass Pro store. People love the challenge of living on the land. They love the peace and quiet they find out in the woods. Whether you prefer the comfort of air conditioning or the shelter of a tent, we all find ourselves in survival mode from time to time. Hard times come in the form of money shortages, family crises, sicknesses, trouble at school, this COVID pandemic that is going on that we weren't prepared for, but we are trying our best. Keep your masks on, your hand sanitizers, washing your hands. When those tough times come, we want nothing more than to survive, right? And to be okay. Today we are starting a series, like I said, all about survival. We are going to look at some of the Bible's greatest survivors and learn the secrets how they succeeded. Our first survivor is one of the most famous heroes of the Bible. He faced a giant and a challenge when troubles came. He was prepared. That's making a plan. David, the shepherd boy, had a plan. He had a plan that served him in the wild as he defended his flocks from lions and wolves and bears. And, and even a greater threat came his way. The same plan helped him not only to survive, but to conquer his giant. All right, my action Bible, love my action Bible. I'm gonna read today's David and Goliath out of the action Bible. And again, it's in 1 Samuel, starting at 17. All right. So a few years later, the Philistines collected their forces and, and, and prepared an attack against Israel, Saul's masses and his armies against them. And David's three oldest brothers joined the king's forces. But one evening, David come in from the fields to find his father busy packing food. This is for your brothers. I want you to take it to him. I'll leave right away. What's the latest news from the battlefield? Not good, his father said, and I'm worried. The not good news is this, is this. A giant is fighting for the Philistines. All the Israelites are scared of him, including King Saul. What is going on, David thought, this whole time while he's walking his way to the battlefield for his, to take the food to his brother. What is going on? Listen to that giant. And the giant says, Why do you bother lining up to battle? Just send out one, one man who dares to fight me. If he kills me, then the Philistines will all put them their weapons down and they will be your servants but if I the giant Goliath kills him you will be our servants who is this unclean Philistine that thinks he can defend the army of God said David that's Goliath everybody was scared the king has said that whoever defeats him will receive great wealth Saul's own daughter and the best of all of not to pay taxes again but no man dare faces Goliath. Elab, 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 I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, it's David's brother, oldest brother, overhears David asking about Goliath. What are you doing here mouthing off? Why aren't you home where you belong taking care of your sheep? Father sent me, father sent me with all this food for you. And I'm not the one mouthing off. It's that Philistine over there wanting to insulting our God. Ever since the prophet Samuel chose David instead of him, Elab has been filled with jealousy. Now his shame burst into to the open. You're just a spoiled kid who wants to battle for your own fun. No, it's not. I just hate to see our God disrespected. I'll fight that giant, David said. David's word spread through camp really, really fast. Our, oh, king, there is one person 
who will fight? But before he could get out who it was, he said, bring him, bring him to me at once. David enters Saul tent, Saul's tent, but Saul does not recognize this young shepherd as the same boy who used to play for him. An untrained teenager? You can't fight the giant. He's an elite warrior. David said, I, I am the shepherd. I have killed bears and lions to protect my sheep. The Lord is our shepherd. So God will help me kill this Philistine to protect our people. Spoken with courage and faith, go and the Lord will be with you. You may even wear my own armor to protect you from this monster. So David starts to try it on. I can't wear this. I can't use this for fighting. I'm not used to wearing this stuff. And besides, my plan is not to defend myself, but to attack. I don't need armor. I just need stones and my sling. With only his shepherd's staff and a sling, David goes out to meet the Philistine giant. The armies of both camps watching while their champion uh, champions are face to face. Ha ha ha! Do you think I'm a dog that you can just chase around with your sticks and your stones? Says the giant. I'll give your flesh to my animals. You come with a sword, a spear, a shield, but I come in the name of the God who will give me victory. So he's like gearing up his sling with his stone in it. The giant laughs, but David whirls his sling and takes a careful aim and lets that stone fly and whack! Right in the middle of his forehead, he hits that giant. David has slain Goliath with one single shot from his sling. He runs into his body and grabs Goliath's sword and holds it up high for victory. Let everyone know that God does not need human weapons. This battle is the Lord's and he has delivered the Philistines to us. It must have been God. How else could a mere boy defeat Goliath, everyone said. In terror, the Philistines started running and fleeing. And all of a sudden, because the change of events had, that happened, the excitement of Israelites chased the Philistines back to their own land. And that's the story in today's Action Bible. Let's see if I have anything else that I want to go over. Um, I think we are good. So, remember, 1 Samuel, David and Goliath. David is our first survivor. So we'll move on to snacks and crafts about today's reading. And next week, we'll go on to our second survivor. See you guys. Bye-bye. snack and craft time. Now, I am outside by the bonfire, so first things first, I'm going to apologize for any interruptions that we may <laughs> may happen out here, because you just never know. So, I'm going to get in my backpack and recap over today's story. And also, got my backpack Bible, I'm going to read our Bible verse. Remember, I didn't have it with me when I was out in the tent. So, our memory verse throughout this survivor series is Psalms 29 verse 11. All right, Psalms 29, 9, 10, 11. Okay, the Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. That is our memory verse throughout this survivor series. And then to recap, um, Sometimes we find ourselves in survivor mode and faced with bullies or other giant problems. These problems may come up unexpectedly, 
but if you have a plan of action, we can conquer it, just like David. Remember, David defeated Goliath today. The first step to any good plan is prayer. We've been speaking a lot about prayers, and remember, if you have any prayer requests, please send them to me and the, uh, the church, and all of our prayer circle will pray over your prayers and praise requests. We need to take the problem, and we need to lay it at the Lord's feet. David took his problem to God, and God gave him the courage. Second, we need to rely on God to show us what to do. The best way to learn is to study God's Word. Third, we need to give all the glory to God no matter what happens. Whatever crisis you are facing, God can use it to bring glory to His name just as He did with David. God can use your faithfulness to show others how good He is. What a blessing that would be if our struggles helped someone to find Jesus. Trouble is going to come. Problems are unavoidable. You may be doing fine today, but sooner or later you'll be faced in crisis or in a crisis mode like David. Don't let trouble get the best of you. Be prepared. Plan ahead. Let God show you how to handle these problems so you can bring glory and honor in his name. That's a recap of today's story. So, our snack that I came up with, which everybody can guess, I'm by a bonfire, what do you think we're gonna make? You're right, s'mores. What is a fire without s'mores? Now, I'm gonna make them a little bit differently. Usually you have graham crackers, a chocolate bar, or a Hershey bar, and marshmallows. Today, our s'mores, I've got fudge stripes. Why do I have fudge stripes? I have fudge stripes because these cookies, fudge stripes, but they already come with the chocolate on the back. So when you melt your marshmallows, you pull it all off and you have a nice, yummy s'more. So let's get making s'mores. Marshmallows. I love your marshmallows. How do you like your marshmallows? Toasted? Roasted? Burnt? <laughs> My marshmallows are all stuck together. There we go. All right, now I've got me a stick. And we whittled the end of it. And we're going to put it in the fire and make today's snack. Roasted, toasted, burnt marshmallow, just like how I like them. Blow out the fire, and you might need an adult to help you with these snacks. Put cookie on the bottom, cookie on top, and pinch it right off. <laughs> and you've got a nice, gooey, gooey s'mores. So that's our snack for today. I'll put that in the fire and burn that right off and we'll move into our craft. Okay, craft. Now, do you remember what David used to defeat Goliath? Yep, you're right. He just only, remember, he whooshed around his sling and used only one stone. Now remember, he gathered five, but it only took one stone to be, defeat that big giant. And look what I found at the Dollar Tree today. So if you're in a swimming pool, I thought this would be fun. Or if you're at your local Dollar Tree, it's right here in town. Look, a little sling, a water sling. This is a squish ball. Anyways, I thought that was fun. All right, so today our craft is going to be a sling, a slingshot, just like David defeated Goliath. Now what we have, let me have my bags of tricks here, all kinds of things. 
All right, what you will need for today's craft is I've just got a good old toilet paper roll. And you can use a foam cup, you can use a plastic cup, a solo cup. And then I've got 12 inch balloons. Now I did try to use nine inch balloons and it didn't work. So if the balloon says 12 inches, you're pretty good to go. And I did not bring my scissors out here with me, but I will show you what I did. On the balloon, I cut the very tip of my balloon. So when you have a whole balloon, you'll want to cut the tip of it off and then tie a knot in the part you would blow in. And then you just stretch it right over your toilet paper roll, just like that. It almost looks like a nightcap on. You can draw a little night <laughs> eyes and a smile. And then I brought my little pom-poms out. Actually, you know what we could do is probably shoot marshmallows. <laughs> it could be a marshmallow shooter. But I'm gonna, oops, I dropped that one. Put my little pom-pom down in the sling. And you pull it back. And fire in the hole! How fun is that? Let's do it again. I don't know if you can catch it. There, I tried not to do that one as hard because the other one just flew. But that is today's craft. A toilet paper roll and a balloon, cut it, put it right on top like a hat, and then slingshot it just like David and defeat all of your giants. Make a plan, follow God's word, and conquer the world, you all. All right, thank you so much. To finish off today's Bible moment, which I hope you enjoyed, I wanted to bring in a little bit of survival. If you watch it with my family and I, we're actually watching the Survivor um, Second Chance in Cam Cambodia. That's what we're watching. And at the end of the evening, when they've done all their challenges, the tribe votes and one person, like I'd mentioned earlier, gets voted off the island. And as a reminder too, um, if you would like um, this children's moments today, let me know in the church office. I have it all in a baggie for you. Here's David, and I have our Bible verse for you that you will have in there. I'll put our little snack and our craft in there. And remember, our Bible verse, Psalm 29 11, the Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. And that'll be in your little baggie. Let me know, and I have that prepared for you. So tonight, to finish today's Bible reading, I have my family here, my, my family tribe, and tonight we have all voted, and the votes are in and have been tallied. And tonight, person going home off the island is Goliath. I'm sorry, Goliath, but the tribe has spoken and the fire which represents life must be out.